I'm gonna be a grown ass woman and do my taxes for once without my mommy and daddy. In recent years, we've seen the rise of the woman child, the immature, messy, totally unput together woman who just can't seem to grow up. And I'm sure your life is fun, but it's really just kind of a series of wild shenanigans. We're well acquainted with the man child who's been a comedic staple for decades. He's the incorrigible slacker who just wants to hang with his buddies, the permanent adolescent. Dad, what are you doing? It's Shark Week whose only goal is staving off maturity for as long as possible. I'm a stay-at-home son. But as with so many other things, it's different for women. Here are some common traits of the woman child on screen. She has intense friendships that might function as codependent partnerships. I just want to meet a guy that I like as much as you. Is that too much to ask for? Yes. Yes, it is. I hate everyone but you. And if those friends outgrow her, it can be devastating. Sophie, I f***ing held your head while you cried. I bought special milk for you. I know where you hide your pills. Don't treat me like a three-hour brunch friend. She has unstable romantic relationships with guys who are non-committal. You slept over. I did. <laughs> I thought we had a rule against that. Unpredictable. I like you so much, I don't know where you disappear to. And generally add more chaos to her life rather than offering any solution to her woes. It's Jeff. That's why I need a new apartment. She's probably coasting in her career, working an unfulfilling job, failing to make headway in her dream field, or plagued by indecisiveness over how to improve her situation. Okay, my cousin works at a convalescent home in Yonkers. Do you want me to see if they need an extra hand? Yeah, no, I can't do that again. I, I freak out old people, I remind them of Nam. Yet, while she may not come off as a go-getter, deep down she's usually a dreamer. Do you think that I think this is the best use of my literary voice and my myriad talents? Harboring huge career ambitions that often find her just barely scraping by in a big city she can't really afford. There's usually an undercurrent of sadness to the woman child. I'm so embarrassed, I'm not a real person yet. And while we comfortably laugh at the man-child who's content to wallow in his behavior, many women children make audiences feel uncomfortable to some degree. It's really difficult for me to be happy. So what is it about this character that makes her more than just a gender-flipped play on all those generations of man-boys? Here's our take on the woman-child and how she's uniquely suited to capture some of the harsh, universal truths about coming of age today. What do you do? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Because what you do is complicated? Uh, because I don't really do it. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. It's like your own personal film festival streaming anytime, anywhere. The seeds for The Woman Child were planted by women like I Love Lucy's Lucy Ricardo, who chafed against society's expectations to be a cookie-cutter wife and mother. Lucy, are you gonna fix my breakfast or not? What do you want me to do, starve to death? Would you please? While she did have a husband and son, the character floundered through a series of odd jobs, chasing unrealistic dreams of stardom, ignoring her husband's orders, and sharing everything with her best friend, Ethel. In the 60s and 70s, Lucy's independence and gumption gave way to revolutionary single women, like that girl's Anne Marie and the Mary Tyler Moore show's Mary Richards. You got spunk. These single ladies were defined by ambition and professionalism more than their dating lives. I've got an audition for a Broadway show. This could really be an important break for me. Yet they were strong, self-possessed women. But the point is that Rhoda is my friend, and I can't take all the credit for the show. And as the single woman became a more common archetype, most took their cues from the likes of Mary Richards. They were smart, capable professionals navigating love and career in their own ways. Looking back, though, we can see some interesting precursors to the woman child. I was really gonna be something by the age of 23. Claudia Wiles' 1978 film Girlfriends, about two best friends living, working, and growing apart in New York City, offered an unusually candid look at the lives of young single women without sentiment or compromise. I had an abortion this morning. He doesn't know. I didn't want to be talked out of it. 
This early exploration of female young adulthood might now appear remarkably prescient to fans of Broad City, Girls, or Frances Ha. Just a couple of things I can't do because I had an abortion yesterday. 90s movies gave us a few memorable female lost souls who acknowledged the hard truths of growing up. Like Catherine Keener's Amelia in Walking and Talking. I wonder if I'll ever know what it's like to not break up with someone. Or Winona Ryder's Lelena in Reality Bites. I'm not gonna work at the Gap for Christ's sake, okay? On TV, exemplars for the modern single lady like Ally McBeal and Sex and the City's Carrie Bradshaw were floundering in their love lives and didn't always make good decisions. I spent $40,000 on shoes and I have no place to live? Yet, while Allie and Carrie might not have it all together, their glamorous lifestyles and professional success were still aspirational. Early 2000s woman-child precursors like youthful mom Lorelai Gilmore were a little more down-to-earth. I am a grown woman, says the woman with the Hello Kitty waffle iron. 30 Rock's Liz Lemon took the Mary Tyler Moore model of the spunky single career gal, Who's that? Kicking it down the street. but stripped away the glamour. I ate a Three Musketeers bar for breakfast this morning, and this bra is held together with tape." Meanwhile, from the 90s into the 2000s, the man-child movie became the dominant comedy form, thanks to actors like Will Ferrell, Adam Sandler, and Seth Rogen, and directors like Todd Phillips and Judd Apatow. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup! Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yup! In these stories, the men could be endlessly slovenly and childish while still retaining audience sympathy, but the female characters around them were expected to whip them into shape. Ow, you're tearing my ear off! So this raised the question, would audiences want to watch a woman who was just as much of a juvenile mess? Given the man-child's box office success, it was perhaps inevitable that sooner or later this winning formula would be applied to women. In 2011, the Apatow-produced Bridesmaids marked a cultural turning point for stories about women whose development was just as arrested as the boys. I'm telling you, hitting bottom is a good thing because, because, because. there's nowhere to go but up, yep. right? Yep. Before long, the women behaving badly comedy became a thriving genre all on its own, in the movies and on TV. Your 20s are for wild shenanigans. But aren't you 30? These woman-child stories can differ a lot from their male counterparts, though. This female protagonist isn't always crude or cartoonish. The humor of her story may be understated and likely complemented by darker, dramatic questions about why she's failing to grow up. If things were just a little bit more hospitable, down south in my broken body, Buddy and I would be here right now with a teenager and probably even more kids! And while the man-child tends to be loved or tolerated by the people around him in his story, the woman-child is often viewed with more suspicion, confusion, and discomfort in her world. I love the way the two of you aren't embarrassed about where you are in life. Thank you. The dominant theme of the woman-child story is uncertainty. I don't know what to do with my future. Something a movie like Frances Ha acknowledges can be both thrilling and depressing. I kind of thought that we were going to renew our lease. Yeah, but we never talked about it. Much as Lucy Ricardo first flouted the ideal of the perfect housewife, today's woman child is a rejection of those same expectations for women to have it all. Is this what you always want to do? Uh, no. I, but I got this job after college and it fit my interest at the time. But what makes her experience so distinct from the man child, and why are they often received so differently? The man-child is in part defined by his fun bromances. But the woman-child's emphasis on friendships is almost always taken to an extreme where they're central to her identity and daily life. We are like a lesbian couple that doesn't have sex anymore. The lead characters of Frances Ha, Bridesmaids, Life Partners, and more are devastated by the idea of being left behind by their best friends. I'm sorry. Too mature for this now that you have a boyfriend. While shows like Broad City and Girls derive most of their comedy and drama from this at times inspirational and at times unhealthy form of codependence. You want me to FaceTime from the bathroom? Yeah. The woman child story often plays out against the backdrop of a big city, and she's uniquely characterized by an intense relationship with her setting. You are from New York, therefore, you are just naturally interesting. 
Many of our most famous man-child stories tend to take place in a generic suburban sprawl, highlighting the character's comfortable rut. But the woman-child struggles in places like Los Angeles or New York City. Do I not have a doctor here? Wait, you don't have a doctor here? No one in the city does. That's why it's a cesspool. And her setting is a metaphor for her outsized ambitions. We are going to take over the world. You'll be this awesomely bitchy publishing mogul. And you'll be this famous modern dancer. While single-minded drive was a virtue in her old-school predecessors, the woman-child's choice to pursue her possibly unrealistic dreams is often seen as another facet of her refusal to grow up. We can't keep bankrolling your groovy lifestyle. My groovy lifestyle? While the man-child is often transformed by meeting the right woman, finding a guy is rarely the solution to the woman-child's problems. Eh. This difference reflects an implicit double standard. For the man-child, falling in love is settling down, ending his wild bachelor days by finding a woman who can replace his mother and take care of him. But as usual, we expect more from female characters. Before she can be ready for a happy home life, first, the woman-child has to learn to take care of herself. It's about you taking responsibility for yourself. I know. Audiences seem to expect more from woman-child stories, too, when it comes to depth and nuance in the exploration of arrested development. This life will end, and it's the secret world that exists right there in public, unnoticed, that no one else knows about. As Bridesmaids director Paul Feig told The Huffington Post, one of their big concerns with Annie was whether audiences can find messy, directionless female characters sufficiently likable. He noted that traditionally, it's easier for male characters to get away with not having redeeming characteristics because our culture assumes that being out of control is, quote, just what they do. The likability concern is why Bridesmaids spends so much time on Annie's crushed dreams to open a bakery. You know what you should be doing? Setting up a new bakery. No, I'm kind of done with that. She's a driven person who's lost her way, these scenes tell us, not just an aimless slacker, which would be all right for the man-child, but might make the woman-child too unappealing. The alternative to working hard to making the woman-child sympathetic is a story like Young Adult, which peers bluntly into the dark side of failing to grow up. She feels sorry for you. We all do, Mavis. It's obvious you're having some mental sickness, some depression. Mavis Gary's narcissistic worship of her own superficial beauty, her obsession with her lost youth, and her constant reality TV show binging reflect a larger culture with infantile values. You knew me when I was at my best. You weren't at your best then, Mavis. The Man-Child movie has been criticized for glorifying regression and justifying the idea of men indefinitely delaying adulthood. While the millions of adults aged 25 to 34 who currently still live with their parents can be blamed on lots of factors like a lack of jobs and rising house prices, these critics suggest that the Man-Child fantasy allows male viewers to revel in immaturity. Mother, Oreo smoothie now! But the woman-child does a better job of putting that delay in its proper sociological context. Today, many women are less focused on marriage, family, and other so-called traditional values, and they're well aware that these things don't provide the guaranteed stability they once promised. In many ways, what can be seen as a refusal to grow up is really their prioritizing desires that previous generations of women were just expected to ignore. It's like, it's my rotation. I'll make the rules. So when I call you, bring over the Chasing dream careers, shunning committed relationships, living in cities that are too expensive for them, these hallmarks of the woman-child have long been romanticized as the norm for ambitious men. The woman-child may be judged by her peers or her viewers for being impractical. You know, you're really working at it, and I really admire that effort to do something that is not maybe uh, the most natural to you for not wanting to settle or being slow to settle down. Um, this is my husband. <laughs> you don't have a husband. But in real life, it's not easy to tell the difference between being realistic and giving up, between being starry-eyed and having a worthy goal. How high is too high to aim? And is it so unusual to fail, struggle, or take your time? When the woman-child eventually does get around to her growing up, it most often involves self-acceptance and letting go of internalized self-loathing. She learns to take steps towards some kind of contentment.
It's a huge accomplishment and it's a Thank huge you. piece. It's yeah, I, I know it's a lot of people. She forges newer, healthier relationships with her friends, even if that means letting go a little. Me and you, we're still gonna be us, no matter what. Even if we're in different cities, that's never gonna change. Her maturation story is a more nuanced, realistic take on growing up than the umpteenth story of the slacker who finds a good woman or gets a high-paying job. The woman-child can be every bit as fun as the man-child. Ready to party! And just as frustrating. Look at your room, it's such a mess. No, it's not, it's not that bad. It's like a possum lives here. But more than anything, she is real. This character does something important by normalizing the idea that women, like all human beings, don't always have their lives together. I'm a doctor. I do jujitsu and have hobbies, and you, you just don't really feel like an adult yet. When it comes to being lazy, irresponsible, having crazy pipe dreams, or wanting nothing more than to have fun with your friends, why should men get to have all the fun? I like things that look like mistakes. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a streaming service we love. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film. Whether it's a movie you've been dying to see or one you've never heard of before, there is always something new to discover. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard-to-come-by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline, and there are no ads, ever. This month on Mubi, you can check out the art house classic La Chinoise by the French New Wave pioneer Jean-Luc Godard. This overtly political dark comedy from 1967 centers on a group of disillusioned students attempting to ignite their own revolution. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.